This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. This is the regular May meeting of the Davenport Public Library Board of Trustees. We're meeting in meeting room B at the main library. My name is Steve Emming, president of the Library Board of Trustees, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is roll call and introduction of attendees. Call for the roll. Uh, Malavika? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Here. Oh, thank you. Um, Amanda Motto, she was, didn't think she was going to be able to be here, so we'll pass on that. Um, Judy Lance? Here. Joe no Heinrichs? Here. Tom Engelman? Here. Craig Cooper? Here. Steve Emming? And Laura Guinness? Yes. Is here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to say, step out for a moment. <laughs> okay. Um, on the go. So then, um, as far as um, introduction of attendees, uh, Lexi Riley, the Assistant Library Director, is joining us. Um, Tracy Moore, Development Officer. Um, Casey Shipley, Recorder. And we're expecting Jeff Collins when he's finished with an appointment. So, how soon? And um, yeah. no. okay. And uh, we also have uh, Heidi Newman, who is the New Friends Board President. Welcome, thank you for coming. Um, and, um, um, and let's see, our council liaison is not here at the present time anyway. So, um, looking around, I think that's everyone. So we'll continue on in the agenda. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Uh, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. I so move, Steve. Thank you, Malavika. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Um, is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Malavika? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. Yes. Laura? Yes. Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes. And my own vote is yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public with comment. Hearing and seeing no one, we'll move on. Next um, item on the agenda is reports and communications. First item there is friends. Everything to share with us? Or? All up right at the beginning. <laughs> 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 Real quick, a couple of reports that um, the we're meeting with the directors at the bookstore um, to see what we can improve on there and what kind of little um, items we can provide them the, to for all their service that they've done for over the years. Because um, we do have staff there that is getting a little bit older, so we need to start pulling in some younger people to start working at the bookstore. Um, we started on our RFP to go over um, our finances, so that committee has been selected and they will be sending out letters in regards to that. And I guess the other requests for funding have all, were all approved, so we're happy to have Steve Tracy on board here with us. So, <laughs> so that's what I have to report right now. Okay. Any questions for Heidi? Is there training involved with work in the bookstore? Not, not real, not a lot. It's, like it's mainly showing. going through going through the books and, and putting them on the shelves for, yeah, for sale. And, yeah. So there's not a lot of computer work or anything like that is what you're referring to. Um, I'd like to um, get involved with the um, fundraiser for the children's okay. Fantastic. thing here at the library. But I'd like to, you know, pledge and make payments over time. So uh, I haven't. I tried looking on the website, did not see that ability to do that. Okay, um, we can probably go ahead and do that. We weren't sure as far as timing of when 
it was actually going to be taking place. We okay. get one I have, but that is obviously that's an option. Okay. Can, All right. Yep. Yeah, I noticed the same thing in the form. There wasn't an option for you to take it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Next item on the agenda is commit uh, under reports and communications is committee reports. First item there is finance. Um, one thing is if you look at the budget recap um, in our packet, um, we're about 83% of the way through the year. Um, and our expenditures are running right around that level. So, you know, the budget is working in terms of matching up the timeline. Um, I did want to mention that um, the Finance Committee met and had some discussion about the uh, legislation that passed the um, Iowa House, or passed the legislature about property taxes and how that might impact the library. Um, there's still information to be gathered in terms of exactly how this is going to work. Um, the, um, it appears, at least initially, there will not be, other than the initial problem that the legislature created, or that the folks at Des Moines created by not doing their property, property thing at the beginning, which kind of affected the budget for this year. But beyond that, the legislature didn't really change it for this year. But next year and going forward, there is some issue with exactly how it will play out. Um, they seem to think they're going to save the taxpayers in Iowa a boatload of money. Um, it would appear how that's going to play out is by restricting property tax increases going forward. So, um, again, there is an issue with exactly how this plays out, how it plays out at the city level. Um, and then uh, I was going to try to have some conversation with Marion about exactly how the city is going to account for for example, our levy fund, because that money was levied because of a referendum of the citizens, which is, in my opinion, is a higher level of authority than the city council. And so because of that, there is a question exactly how that will play out. So I think I know how that will play out. Putting my green eye sheet on. <laughs> so um, that essentially is where we're at right now. Am I paraphrasing everything right, Joe? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, um, I mean, this legislation passed um, was one vote short of the unanimous. And apparently, what drove that is the fact that with the assessments being up. They were just the assessments that were just done, uh, the latest ones. Uh, with those being up as much as they are, I mean, some people will say there's enough like 25%. And so, with that, the legislators were hearing a lot from people about you know, what that might do to their property taxes. And uh, although I think this, the idea of this legislation is, is not new, uh, but that certainly uh, got it going. Um, as Tom mentioned, in our case, it would take the 27 cent library levy and roll that into the general fund levy, which would then, as far as we know, eliminate the earmark of that but that library levy. It's a 27 cent per thousand of assessed valuation. And if we take the earmark off of that and become part of the city general fund, not you know necessarily that it's not going to come to us, but we we don't know that specifically. It doesn't come earmarked for the library. Uh, there's also another um, library levy, um, a minimum library levy that stays in place, and that's like six and three quarter cents. 
just for size wise, the um, Steve. Yes. This is on the agenda item. This is on the agenda for oh, later yes, for discussion. Right. This yes. part is okay. of the agenda is for the um, committee report. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So we'll move on. Next item is personnel and men's conferences. Greg, are you aware of anything? I'm not aware of anything new or different. Alviga, advocacy. Just a few things to share. Uh, thank you, Lexi and uh, Jeff. We are going to share uh, uh, Central Public Library and the Piggy Art Museum is going to share table at the Farmers Market, uh, July, August, September, October are the dates. So we're going to have collaboration. Wonderful. So that's happening. Uh, QC made. I've not been for that event in a long time, and I went for it recently at WBIK. And it's just fabulous. I did not know what it was, but I got to learn so much from the legendary herb of tricks. Am I having his name right? Yes. 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 Uh, I mean, I, it was just fabulous. There were like 12 of us together. So it was quite a huge group, which Bill Her, the librarian, led us. Uh, 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 another thing, you know, I just saw and I wanted to share it with friends is a Quad City Community Foundation. Uh, I was at an event and I saw that they have something which they call it the Giving Catalog. And they have it now on their website and they, they introduced it during that event. And now they have it on the website. And it, I don't know whether we, why we are named the Friends. I mean, I don't know the qualifications, but there are tons of nonprofits who are on there. And I just thought of sharing the person to get in touch with to inquire. There is Melody Jones at the Quad City Community Foundation, and it looked to be just, you know, people would just click and donate is what I felt. So I don't know the qualification part, but I just thought to share, so I'm doing this out, kind of. Uh, July 17th, which is a Saturday, I believe, uh, there is an event by the Waste Commission, and that starts off at Denver Public Library's Fairmont uh, Parking lot. Yeah, I think it's June 17th. June 17th. Yeah. Thank you. June 17th, and it's on the it's on the it's on the east side of Danforth Public Libraries. Oh yeah, it is June 17th. I mean, uh, east side of Danforth Public Libraries, Fairmont uh, Street. If, if if anyone would like to join, I'm going to wear the Danforth Public Library T-shirt and do hello. That's my plan. And and if anyone joins in, we could all go for a brunch maybe because it's 9:30. And lastly, as I entered through the main door at here in the library, just love the signage. It was absolutely beautiful. So just wanted to share. Just, just beautiful. So thank you. And last one more. This seems to be a great event. I'm going to go for it this evening. And the person who's presenting it is a past librarian from Petinger Public Library. So you said that we're sharing a table with the Piggy Art Museum at the Farmer's Market. Did we have to pay for that table, or was that an in-kind or a donated? No, thing? I think that we have public library doesn't have to pay for it. Okay. So yeah, it's a free table. At I figured as much. I just wanted to clarify since yeah. we hadn't discussed. Thank yeah, you. no, no, good, good, good. Said. It's it's free, and it's just a collaboration kind of a thing. Like, you know, we have the passes here, and you know, so both of us do it a little bit togetherness. Then they can check it later. <laughs> but thank you very much. Any other questions? Next item under reports and communication is director's report. Anything you want to add or amplify given what you said out there? Yeah, thank you, Steve. So good afternoon. The first thing is uh, an acknowledgement and a thanks to Heidi as a new president for the Friends for this upcoming year. Uh, and the first item that we had listed, obviously, was that uh, the Friends did agree to uh, fully pay for the development officer position moving forward, uh, which is going to really be beneficial to the library in terms of the loss of funding we had from the EICC uh, to be able to backfill that position, uh, that lost money. And that position does almost exclusively Friends work, too. So we're really thankful for them for doing that. And uh, the work that Tracy does to continue to work on fundraising and donor management as well. 
uh, National Library Week went uh, very well. So thank you for the board members that were able to make it uh, to that event as well and represent us during the proclamation. An acknowledgement about the Genesis Visiting Nurses Association too. This is a really big deal because we've been trying to develop a, a process to get a thousand books before kindergarten through uh, those new mothers in some fashion. And uh, Izzy Noble and Emily somehow were able to do that recently. So we're very excited to be able to do that. So they're going to share the literature about uh, that program and then also to receive uh, a book so they can start developing their own library. So we're really excited. When they came to our house after I had my daughter, she had a book and she had um, <laughs> Information on a thousand books before kindergarten. That's fantastic. That was in January. That's amazing. Yay. Cool. Uh, the GLOW trips went really well. Those are the grade level outreach experience trips. That's where youth services and outreach uh, staff are able to make it to first graders. And then uh, we're able to do uh, some story times and uh, a little bit about their school uh, and history. And some really fun things for that. And then encourage them to come into their local library as well after that or for the rest of the summer. That's been really great. And then a couple of other wonderful programs that we've had. We had the latest round of QC Beats, and that is, again, a partnership with a couple of other organizations, uh, the Health and Wellness Fair that we had. And then we also have two months that we're celebrating uh, this month, uh, Asian American Pacific Island Heritage and then also Jewish American Heritage Month. So we have a reading challenge for that. Uh, we participated with Iowa Battle of Books as well. So a lot of really cool things for that. Uh, the ILA Symposium, so uh, that is, it was a leadership symposium that occurred uh, in April. And Brittany Peacock, our community outreach and marketing supervisor, was on the symposium panel uh, with a number of thought leaders from across the nation. And she represented the library, and she's also the president of the Association of Bookmobile and Outreach Services this year. So she really positively represented the library and she did a wonderful job with that, which is really cool. And then we also hosted Davenport Youth Citizens again via May 8th, and Steve is a participant this year. Mm -hmm. And it was really great to be able to have the, the night for the library. That's the first time we've been able to do that. So we weren't vying for time uh, with other city departments. We had the whole evening for ourselves, and we still ran out of time to share everything that the great library staff uh, does for the community. And then a couple of upcoming programs. Uh, summer Reading Kickoff is going to be on Saturday, June 3rd from 10 to 12. It'll be at Fairmount. So if you're able to make it to that, that would be wonderful. We're going to do Touch a Truck, which is exciting. Uh, Pride Month Storytelling Night is on June 14th. That'll be for adults. Uh, Juneteenth, uh, we have a lot of really great things. Uh, we have Civil Rights uh, Commission doing a program on June 15th at Fairmount. And then also on June 17th, uh, we're going to have a very busy day there uh, with the Juneteenth event at the Lincoln Center, uh, Veg Family Fun Days, and the QC Unity Pride Parade, too, which are all really cool things. And then one other thing that didn't make it into the report that I want to pass on is an update for the Community Center so that you can get a status update on what that is. Uh, Casey and I were able to attend a pre-construction meeting on Friday at Fairmount, uh, and that was a meeting with uh, city project managers, uh, the architectural firm, which is OPN, and then the construction firm that won the contract, which is Precision Builders. Uh, at this point, uh, they were initially going to be uh, starting construction in early May, or late May, early June. Uh, they're actually going to delay that a little bit now, which is good for us because of summer reading kickoff. But around July 1st is when they're actually going to launch uh, construction. They're going to start construction on the community center. So once they do start construction, that means there's going to be temporary fencing that's going to be installed uh, on a construction site. Uh, they have indicated they will do a dedicated entrance. Uh, so they're not going to be coming in library lane or into the parking lot, which is good for us, uh, minimizes damage, and then also doesn't uh, impact patron access to the, to the library as much and also a little bit on the noise. So they're going to have a dedicated entrance off of Fairmount into a fenced in area. Once they start construction uh, with the pre-grading and the site work, uh, the normal work day is going to be from 7 a.m. to about 3.30 p.m. Uh, it's a residential zone, so they can only work from 7 to 7 because of the noise ordinances in the city. 
Uh, the Monument Street sign and the lights are going to be protected during fencing. The large rock that has a library-like logo, that will have to be moved. Uh, that location is actually going to be a retention pond or a bioswale area. And then a couple of other cool features about the building, because as you know, it's going to be a multi-purpose half-court gym and then a wall that we're going to be able to project outdoor movies on. There are also plans in the future to install a, an outdoor pickleball court and then also a playground in that area too. So really creating much more of a destination space for the community where we'll essentially have a public library, a community college, a community center, pickleball courts, and a playground all in that one spot right next to the path as well. And, oh, timeline on it. Uh, they're actually hoping to be done by January. So it's coming along quicker than we had anticipated. Yeah. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or concerns. So this may not be for us or you to reply, but just a thought came to my mind. You talked about pickleball courts, and I know this is more of a city question, not for us. But you know, normally tennis courts are converted into pickleball courts, and there is no tennis court in the city of Canada for huh. kids to play. And the ones that they have at Duck Creek are not usable. In the way they are. So, people who live here don't go normally to Bettendorf or Illinois. So, just a thought if we had the opportunity to talk uh, to the city, because normally it's the tennis court gets transformed into a pickle court, pickle ball court. That's how they, that's how they do it. Sport of the future. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just sad. So, it's just, <laughs> just a thought. Just yeah. A thought. I'm not sure if, if the library will have much of course. sway of in course. that. It's definitely a recommendation. Parks and Rec. Of but, course. Yeah. I mean, is it okay if I say it's? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. If you're a resident, <laughs> yeah. I encourage you to. Yeah. Uh, and to what you mentioned, uh, I saw it on City of Danforth's uh, Facebook page. Uh, they shared a few uh, plan um, pictures, yeah. architects' renditions about how this space is going to look. So it was really pretty to see it. Yeah, they yeah. look great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I had a comment about the Davenport Youth Program. Um, you know, all the library staff that were involved in that uh, did an excellent job. Um, as Jeff said, we ended up running out of time, but um, we're maybe a little bit older and still maybe running out of time. But I um, just want to say that some of the comments that I heard from people, um, they all seem to be around the theme of like, oh, I didn't know the library had that. Or, yeah. I didn't know the library did that. And as far as the Studio 321, the makerspace, um, from the comments there, um, after uh, Rusty Ross was, was telling about everything that they had to offer, um, uh, there was one comment that's like, you know, I've always wanted to try one of those, and you know, now I know where one is, but is there a way you can show us how to use it? Oh, yeah, we do that too. <laughs> <laughs> and, so anyway, it was a, it was a really good time. And, Informed about uh, 13 or 14 people about uh, a lot of things that were going in life. Thank you, everybody, for the work that you done. Okay, next item on the agenda is a council liaison, and Marion is not here, so we'll move on. Um, next item on the agenda is old business. The item there for consideration is a motion to approve changes to the circulation policy. I move the new circulation policy. Okay. Second. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Do I have motion and second? Um, to approve the changes to the circulation policy. Is there any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Sylvia? Sylvia? We'll come back to Sylvia. Um, Laura? Uh, yes, hi. Thank you, neighbor. <laughs> uh, Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes, but I just noticed there's something, a word that says no profits. 
no instead of non, maybe no business and no profits under borrow eligibility. Well, so then we need to make a new motion, right, to uh, approve the policy as amended, as recommended by the okay. president. So, okay, let me. Hi, I would like to make a motion to make the edit that Craig suggests and then approve the new policy. Second. I second that motion. Okay, so everybody that's. And back to the original. Yes, I'm yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so I guess so. We basically have an amendment to correct the typo. Yeah. Okay. Typo. So, they are um, for or whatever. It is. Tom and Laura, are you both okay yeah. with yes. the amendment? Hi. With that amendment. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll carry on then. So, uh, just I guess to um, recognize that, I'll just I'd like to start over if we could. So, Laura. Yes. I okay. Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes. Sylvia? Sylvia? Okay, so we got one open. Uh, so anyway, go back. My own vote is yes. The motion carries. I'm on it again. Yes. I did it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Circle, right? <laughs> okay. So the motion carries. And move Wait, on. How yes. come we never are voting in the same order or doing attendance in the same order? Because um, in that way, uh, there is a, one person who always has to give their vote first or the okay, their position. I see. Or last. So just I, I thought it was kind of a nice thing. Thank you. That is the routine on the city council where oh. the vote always rotates. Oh. Okay, so next time my agenda is new business. Um, there First item there is a motion to approve the selected artists for the interactive art installation as part of the enhanced youth spaces project. We have a motion that we make. So moved. Any time? Do a second? So I second it. Steve, you now make it. So we have a motion to second to approve the selected artists for the interactive art installation as part of the enhanced youth services project. Um, is there any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to give you some more background information on this in context. So what we're talking about is the children's spaces at all three libraries. So in October of last year, the board had designated funds from the Rochelle Murray estate bequest specifically to the Enhanced Youth Spaces Project, and that was done in accordance with the gift acceptance policy. And in March of this year, the library entered into an agreement with the Virgin Group based out of Phoenix. Uh, to provide consulting services for the interactive art installations as part of this project. That initial agreement was not to exceed $5,000 for design. Uh, we've made significant progress at this point in terms of planning and fundraising efforts, and we're at about 72% of the project being funded to date. We also have a couple of high dollar grant uh, requests that are pending. We're hoping to hear from two of those this week. Uh, one is $100,000, the other is $165,000. So pretty substantial amounts still. Uh, the public phase of the fundraising campaign is expected to wrap up in June, depending on if we're successful with those grants and a couple of others that are pending. And we are now at a point that we would need to move forward on executing an agreement for the design build services. So a little bit of background on this. Per policy, expenditures above $50,000 must be approved by the Library Board of Trustees. And per city finance and city legal, Interactive art installations are not governed by purchasing policy and therefore not subject to the bidding process. So that's why we have not done an RFQ or an RFP for this process because it is essentially considered art. Uh, we recommend approving the Virgin Group for interactive art installations as part of this project. Uh, they are a design build firm and they specialize in creating interactive learning spaces 
exclusively for public libraries and specifically focusing on young children and it's specifically designed for pre-literacy uh, and literacy skills based on every child ready to read and the ECRR is a program that was built by PLA and ALSC uh, that is essentially based on a couple of core concepts one is that uh, the uh, reading really begins at birth for a child and that a parent is the child's first teacher and the Virgin group takes this a step further and they realize that public libraries are really a child's first classroom for many children uh, they don't sell their educational interactives to other venues they're exclusive to public libraries so you'll never see an installation like this in a pediatric dentist office or, or a pediatrician's office uh, you won't see them in children's museums or any other location like that there are also no complete installations in iowa there are a couple of libraries that have one or two small pieces here or there so davenport public library will be the first library in iowa to have a virgin installation uh, in terms of a budgetary impact again the project is expected to cost 1.08 million uh, we are at 72 percent funding at this time uh, for the library side of things uh, it would come to about three hundred four thousand dollars total uh, we are funding it almost exclusively through grants and private donations and the remainder is uh, getting covered through the funds. Uh, there are other expenses associated with this project that would not go through the Virgin Group. Uh, so that would be uh, if we're doing any kind of painting, if we need to do any electrical work. There are a couple of other components that we will add in as well that won't be done through the Virgin Group. So there might be some shelving, there might be some seating, uh, some other different aspects. But we're at a point now where we need to start to move forward on this to make sure that everything is moving forward. Um, they're a very de busy design build firm. They work with very large contracts and they have limited windows that we can fit in. So it takes about a six month process and we can get two of our libraries done this year if we move forward soon. Uh, then that would be Eastern and Fairmount with Maine coming next year. If we're not able to get this done now, we might have to wait until 2026 uh, because of some of the some of their workflow issues. And then another background on that: the reason that we have select we prioritized Eastern is because Eastern has seen the least amount of updates since that building went into place. Main saw the renovation, and Fairmount we had $75,000 of the furnishing project last year that went almost exclusively to the children's area. Uh, and then also the community in the Fairmount area is going to be receiving the, com the community center soon too. So the priority for us is Eastern and then Fairmount and then Maine for those reasons. So that was a lot of information I just threw at you. I understand if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, uh, I presume that all three will be identically designed or will they be a little variation? They're going to be a little bit variations. It's a good question. Uh, they're all going to have the same kind of uh, overall look and consistency and feel but they will be a little bit unique to each area. So they will all be nature themed and they're gonna be nature themed based on the library's ecosystem. So Maine is gonna be kind of a riparian uh, setup with a river. Uh, we're gonna have a prairie kind of fill for Eastern, so there'll be more flowers. And then at uh, Fairmount, it'll be cattails, uh, kind of a wetlands kind of fill. So there are, you'll, you'll know that you're in a Davenport Public Library when you see those three areas, because they will have the same kind of look and feel, but they will also be a little bit different. And then one of the cool features about this too is there are what they call small interactives uh, that we're gonna be able to actually remove. And we can then either refurbish those if we need to, or we can swap them out. We actually have a circulating process if we wanted to, where we could kind of lend them to the different libraries. So we could loan those out between libraries if we wanted to. Great. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, hearing none. Councilor Devoe. We vote on the motion to approve the selected artist for the interactive art installation as part of the Enhanced Youth Spaces Project. Uh, Sylvia? Yes. Thank you. Um, Laura? Aye. Judy? Yes. Joe? Yes. 
Tom? Yes. Greg? Yes. Malavita? Yes. <laughs> and my own vote is yes. The motion carries. Okay. Next item on the agenda is discussion of the special library level of Nicoletti and House File 718. Wow, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thought maybe what I might do is just give a little bit of a summary of this. And Tom, uh, Tom has covered most of this, but just to make sure I don't miss anything as far as what I had marked off here, I'll just do the whole thing. As I mentioned before, assessments being up is pretty much what, as I understand, you know, led the legislature to be almost unanimous uh, in this, all but one, one legislator. And so um, this, it's been kind of complicated because this bill has been in various forms in the House and the Senate and different committees, and it ends up as House File 718, which was approved by both houses and approved and signed by the governor. Um, as Tom mentioned, uh, the bill eliminates a number of individual levies, um, in our case, the library levy, which was voted approved in 2003. There's 16 individual levies that are um, eliminated. Uh, the eliminated by title, in other words, they don't ex they're not in the, they've been removed from from um, the Iowa Code, I guess, the section that included those. Um, but the amount of the levy um, is is still there, and so what would happen? For example, in our case, um, the the, um, the the legislation allows cities and counties to take the value of those eliminated levies and add add them to their general fund levy, uh, which results in what's now called an adjusted um, adjusted city general fund levy, and so the base levy. For the city is eight dollars and ten cents. So, in our case, um, just as an example, you took that plus the twenty-seven cent library levy. You have a levy of eight dollars and thirty-seven cents, and um, so that's I guess where you would start. Um, but then there are adjustments to the property tax um, levies because and they would compare two years. So, for example, um, you would take, um, let me see, where is this? Um, the baseline adjusted city general fund levy year is fiscal year 2024, which starts in July. Starts in July, or is that where we are now? FY24 would be uh, July 1st. That's July 1st. Of yeah. 2023. Oh, yeah. 23, yeah. Thank you, Jim. So that would be the baseline year. And so that would be the, the first then adjusted city general fund levy adjustment will be for fiscal year 25 budget. And um, then, so what will happen is they'll take that fiscal year 25 budget or levy amount. And not uh, not levy amount, but um, the, the valuation, and they'll compare that with um, the fiscal year 24, and they'll compute what the increase or what the growth in that was, and so then if if the growth is The overall taxable value of the city or county um, in the current year compared to the previous year is greater than 3% but less than 6%, then their allowable growth is adjusted to 2%. So they would allow a 2% increase in the um, taxable value. If the allowable growth is greater than 6%, then their allowable growth is just at 3%. So 3% is the most it can increase. So I guess we don't know at this point what that's going to be. And 
um, what that will do to the overall city um, tax levy. Um, but But, um, well, there was a tool for League of Cities put out, um, but it was based on an earlier version. But on that, um, it showed that Davenport, if, if fiscal year 23 was the start, or if this was already in place, it would have an impact of about 2.6 to 2.7 million dollars uh, decrease. And so, um, I don't know what any changes might have done to that, but that was not a good sign. Um, so this adjustment, uh, two percent, three percent, whatever it comes out to be, um, that was um, uh, to reduce the city's levy. But it's unknown what's going to get adjusted. I mean, it's the overall city levy, but our twenty-seven cents is in there. So does it all get? Reduced pro rata. Uh, the only information I was able to get on that is it's 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 up to the city budget process. So that's I guess that maybe is our main concern right there is not knowing how that might come out. Um, currently, the fiscal twenty fiscal year twenty three levy amounts the. The 27 cent library levy um, brings in just a little over $1.3 million. And this uh, minimum levy, the six and three quarter cent, which remains in place, is um, about $336,000. And so um, that's how much is out there in total, um, you know, how that's going to be impacted by uh, these various things is unknown. The, um, the, adjust, the adjustment process, the 2% or 3% adjustment, um, that sunsets in fiscal 28 or 29. So that has a four year sunset on it. Um, but the changes as far as the elimination of the individual levy from that, that's that's permanent. So, it's interesting, I need to go back and look at it, but I did read someplace where I thought it said um, that we could still, we could still um, have a referendum for a, a city approved levy, a voter approved levy, um, which is an interesting concept in two regards. One is, well, yeah, I guess you could do it again, but on the other hand, kind of going back to what Tom said, it just seems really bad form to take something that the voters approve and say, okay, well, you know, do away with that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much what happened. Um, what I've tried to explain here is based on information I got from the um, lobbyists for the Iowa Library Association, and um, that, you know, I assume you get those uh, emails, that was taken out of that information, and also from the I will leave the cities. They've done a guy on some real and also. Um, but you know, they cautioned that you know there's still a lot of moving parts and even though it's been signed in the law, it's still gonna see how it actually plays out. So they say keep checking that. It, it it is interesting that the max increase in valuation now is gonna be three percent. And it's interesting because if you look at the inflation rate, it's like six percent, and like eighty percent of the city's budget is personnel. So all the pressure is going to be on the union negotiations in terms of how that percentage fits into the three percent cap, and whether whether we're at three percent in any given year. Whether it's two percent, um, it is what the legislature does. As things happen, if things happen going forward, we'll do our best to get you there. 
Just one other thing to tack on is we will be monitoring this moving forward, obviously, working closely with the library and the finance committee. And the budget process is going to start in September coming up uh, for the next fiscal year. So we'll have more information later in the fall as we receive it, and we'll move forward there. We're confident that uh, everything is going to work out just fine, and we'll keep it. Okay. Any questions, comments? Maybe that's the concern? I saw some yes. calculator online uh, okay. about what you just said, like yeah. you know, how each city within the state, and I I would have to reread it to really understand it well. Yeah, and that was, so, that was like you said, that was based sharing. on a previous version of this. Yes. Yeah, I'm so, losing my connection. Pardon me? Sorry. Sylvia? I think she said she was losing her connection. Oh, yeah, she said she's from Sylvia still. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, by the way, who would be able to hold up the link to? Oh, oh. It's for me and for Lauren. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. on the agenda is to see its comments. Um, Amanda asked me to pass this along. It's in regard to the reading challenge. And so this is this is a library story. <laughs> she said, I see on the agenda there will be presentation about the reading challenges and I wanted to share something. Last week I picked up my son from school at Eisenhower where he's in, where he's in first grade. One day, uh, one day, and he was absolutely beside himself with excitement. He was shaking a pamphlet in my face and talking so rapidly I had to ask him to slow down. He told me that people had come from the Davenport Public Library to talk to his class and there was a big reading challenge that he just had to be part of. While he was enthusiastic about all the possible prizes, he kept repeating that there was a staycation at a hotel on the line, and he needed to do everything to win it. He asked me about ten times when we could go to the library next. I was so happy and appreciative to the staff who came out and got the kiddos so excited about reading in the library. Thank you, Brittany and crew, I'm sure. Love the staycation. I have to do it. It's on the line. <laughs> uh, we're the kids. We just got a little ribbons. <laughs> yeah, <come along. laughs> well, there's only one staycation. Okay. Um. Anyway. Uh, that's all I have. Anyway, um, I guess next we'll send it over to uh, Lexi for news about the summer reading challenge. Sounds great. And Casey's got some slides that she's going to pull up and share. Oh, I think you have to click the screen right there down below where it shows Sylvia. If you click on that screen, now click share. Yes. Now if you go with the slides, she'll see them. Thank you. Okay, so um, today I'm going to share a little bit about some of our library reading challenges for the summer reading program. Uh, it's our biggest one of those, but we do a lot more all throughout the year, too. Uh, so first thing I want to talk about is our reading challenge team. So this is one of our newest teams at the library. 
Um, it was established just earlier this year, actually, and it's a cross-departmental team of different library staff. Um, our Youth Services Supervisor, Emily Simpow, leads that team, um, which also includes two Youth Services staff, two Customer Services staff, two Information Services staff, one Special Collections staff, and one Community Outreach staff. Um, so that way we're getting different perspectives, different ideas for how to promote the reading challenges, um, perspectives of people at the desk versus um, working behind the scenes. Um, and so they work together to plan those reading challenges. Uh, right now they're just starting, so they're doing some training on the BeanStack software. Um, they're picking out the badges for summer reading program this year, brainstorming new ways to promote our reading challenges to our patrons, um, and planning a fun challenge for our staff just to get everyone on board in BeanStack. Um, so that's what they are working on right now. They're going to continue to plan things throughout the year. Um, it's really exciting to get a variety of perspectives and planning these. So of course, like I said, our big one is the summer reading program. Um, so there are within that separate challenges for babies and toddlers, uh, one for kids, one for teens, and one for adults with prizes for every age group. Um, we're, um, of course, doing this to try to prevent that summer slide so that when kids are out of school for the summer, they're not just forgetting everything they learned, they're still practicing their reading skills and learning in a variety of ways. Um, so there are um, different opportunities for them to participate and get entries into the prize drawing, not just by reading, but also by going to library programs, um, by trying out different databases and other um, services that we have. Um, we're really trying to engage different learning styles. So um, there are even just some fun op opportunities in there, like I think in the kids one, one of them is um, look at the clouds and see what shapes you can find. So just um, really re uh, reinforcing that imaginative play is an important part of early literacy and learning. Is there a reason why Wilson's not part of that? They didn't make it in the top. Just, that's just the top ones. Right. So um, that is actually, that's a slide from last summer as we were tracking throughout the summer, the schools had the highest percentage of participation in the summer reading program. Um, so we always do trophies at the end of summer, one for the public school with the highest participation percentage and one for private elementary. So um, we post all throughout the summer. So like every week we'll give updates and it kind of boosts participation because kids see that, oh no, my school's not listed. I better get my reading going. So um, that's been a really fun aspect of it. And um, this last year, Hayes won, um, they had 36% participation and Trinity Lutheran won for the private school, so it's 21%. So both of those schools got to go to the city council meeting and get their trophy, and they got $1,000 in new books for their school library. So um, it's a really good incentive for them to participate. Those, those were new winners. Those What's that? Were, those were not the typical winners. Mm -hmm. those, right. were, those were both schools that had, hadn't recently been there. For a long time, it was the same school winning every year, but at some point in the last like five years or so, it started changing every year. So um, I think this might have been the first time that Hayes won in a long time. That's always nice to see. And I think it gives the kids a little bit more boost to try their hardest because they don't see, oh, it's always that school. Um, they know they have a good chance every year. Um, so all of the participants are encouraged to track their reading and other activities using the Beanstack app. Um, we do have paper logs available, though, for anyone who doesn't have access to devices or just really wants something to color on or put stickers on, too. Um, previously, we just did the summer reading program from June through July, but starting last year, we extended it throughout the end of August. Um, because that way we could give the reading logs to students both um, before school got out for the summer and pick them up from the kids when school got back in session um, after summer. Um, because it just really helped kids who had transportation barriers participate for the summer so they could still turn in their log at the end um, and get their prizes. So that really helped. We actually saw, um, I believe it was a 61% increase in participation this year over the previous year. Um, so we did have over 2,000 participants um, join us, and so we're looking to increase that even more this year. Um, so this year, like Jeff mentioned earlier, our kickoff for summer reading will be Saturday, June 3rd. Uh, we held from 10 a.m. until noon over at Fairmont. And this year, our kickoff is going to be our Touch a Drunk event. So um, if you come to that event, you'll see um, fire truck, police cars, um, different cars from Public Works. Um, we will have a World War II Jeep. Um, we'll have something from WQAD called The Beast. I don't know what that is, but I'm very yes. interested. So, um, the our owl will be there. What's that? The weather truck. Ooh, okay. Storm chasers. Storm cool. The Beast. Cool. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I think we have a new name for our for the owl. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and the speaking intelligent of, beast. The intelligent beast. Right, right. <laughs> and speaking of, the owl will be there, and then the Kona ice truck will be there as well. well I believe the ice, the Kona ice truck is selling, um, uh, you know, snow cones as a uh, fundraiser for the Teen Advisory Board. Wow. They did last nice. night. So. Um, so our theme this year for summer reading is find your voice. So there's going to be lots of programs centralized around that theme, um, around music and other fun activities for kids. Um, and then of course, like I was saying, we don't just do reading challenges and reading programs in the summer. Uh, we do things all year round now. So um, in the winter, we hold our winter reading program. It's a, a much more relaxed, lower stakes thing than summer. Um, it usually just goes for the month of January. Um, it's one all ages challenge um, using like a bingo card with different activities. So some of the same things you might do in the summer reading program, um, just in a shorter duration. Um, so that again can be done in the Beanstack app or on a paper reading log. Um, last year, our winter reading program had 313 participants, and based on our overall uh, participation and our population size and the engagement we have for it on social media, we won a prize from BSTAC for doing a great job. So our staff um, did a super job putting together this year's winter reading. Um, and you can see there's some of the prizes that we have. We should try to put together some prize baskets with a variety of items, like the adult one is some nice cozy things for winter, um, and then fun things for the kids. I believe the little crab is like, a speaker for your cell phone that the teens were very <laughs> interested in. <laughs> um, and then we also have a variety of um, Beanstack exclusive challenges. So these ones were just made by Beanstack. We don't have a paper log for them. They are just um, something you can do in the app. Um, it's super easy for our staff because all we have to do is like click a button in there and then our patrons can participate. Um, and so these are really nice for encouraging our patrons to read diverse materials because a lot of them are um, during you know specific months such as the challenge we had for Black History Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, Native American Heritage Month, and this month we have one going on for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, so it encourages patrons to read books um, by authors from those communities. And then the prices um, you can see here are usually like book bundles featuring um, own voices titles, so written by authors who are from those communities. Um, so we have really good participation from those, and again, that's something that usually happens every month or so, so it really keeps our patrons engaged in being staff and reading all year long. And then, of course, I had to mention A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten, which I know you know a lot about. Um, and you can see in the picture there on the left one of the billboards that we recently got up in Davenport. Um, I believe that is the one on Harrison, um, just by Central High School. And we've also got one on 4th and Vision, I think. We had one on 53rd for a little while, too. So um, they've been really popular and noticed a lot and gotten a lot of people excited for the um, so, of course, this is a self-paced program for children from birth to when they begin kindergarten because um, we know how important early access to books and words is for early literacy and development. So, um, research shows that sharing books, conversations, and songs with young children builds their language skills. So, we want to help assure that they become lifelong lovers of books. Um, so, participants in this program get prizes after reading 100, 250, 500, and 750 books, and then finally, of course, 1,000. Um, some of those prizes include a tote bag, a story time kit, um, a t-shirt, a book plate, a picture on a bulletin board, and of course, a book to keep. So we currently have 1,322 kids signed up for this program, and those kids have logged over 200,000 books to date. So um, participation is going up. Um, we're really excited about this partnership with Genesis to increase it even more. So that's what I have for you today. Um, are there any questions? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we have participated in the panel of the reading programs, and as you said, it's always been the printed log. Yeah, because they come like putting stickers and coloring and the <laughs> way, yep. and it's, it's been solid fun. Uh, especially going behind Eastern and you know, sitting on the one of the one of the little benches out there and reading and you know when you when we were you were sharing all this I feel how time has flown for me along with my child so thank you for what you guys have done it's been fun and now I continue as an adult <laughs> that's and that's what we hope is that as kids are participating but they're getting their parents to participate as well thank you, thank you. one other thing to accentuate too 
that Lexi had mentioned that we extended the time frame that you can participate in summer reading from June 1st to August 31st. And I want to re-emphasize the importance of that because what it did is it made the program more accessible and inclusive for participants that had barriers for transportation and to be able to come to their library and participate. Uh, so it increased that participation rate and it has a big effect and a big impact on staff too because that's a lot more work that we have to do during that time frame instead of only doing it for one month or even for two months, they're doing it for 90 days out of the year. So I just want to emphasize the great work that all library employees do in terms of these programs to help support the community. Because it is not just easy to, oh, we extended the time frame. It's that much more work that they have to do. And they do a wonderful job with that. Any questions, comments? Well, next item on the agenda is adjourn. Well, to adjourn for the town. Oh, now we can thank you. <laughs> Save us there. All the great of adjourning. We say goodbye by saying aye. aye. <laughs> Anyone opposed? <laughs> thank you. That's motion carried. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. So, I said.